and we're going to move past the introduction in the business and financial and let's analyze just exactly what the CEO the new CEO had to say during this presentation thank you Carter and welcome everyone I was named CEO of Lordstown Motors just under three months ago. Since then, a lot has happened at Lordstown and in the EV industry generally. The country and the world were ready headed. I just want to say that at Lordstown, one quarter equals one year. It's it towards the day when most new vehicles would have electric powertrains, but EV growth has accelerated at an even faster pace. And all of that was before the U.S. infrastructure bill passed six days ago, putting more than $7 billion into a half a million or more electric vehicle charging stations. Every part of the automotive industry, including and perhaps especially the large commercial fleet sector that Lordstown is targeting, is headed to an electric future. The conversion to electric powertrains provides a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for startup OEMs to penetrate the automotive market which is why we've seen so many EV startups over the past couple of years. Okay, very astute observation. Obviously, uh, very uh, guided thinking here. Seems to uh, really be on point there. Let's move on. But the cold, hard reality of the automotive industry is that scale really matters. While I personally believe that the endurance pickup truck is different from and will be better than many competitive offerings, a great truck alone does not make a great business. Okay, so signals a shift uh, in the business model for Lordstown Motors. From being a one product startup, uh, perhaps looking to build a family of products off of that one uh, product, to let's hear what he has to say. To succeed, Lordstown Motors needs innovation, a competitive cost structure, a vehicle development platform that brings products to market quickly and efficiently, and a differentiated commercial plan. We need a strategy that wins meaningful market share in our target markets against... Wait a minute, that was a lot there. Let's just go back and hear what he had to say again. And will be better than many competitive offerings. A great okay, this is a bit about the uh, truck being better than the most offerings and so on. Now he's going to talk about why Lordstown has to go, you know, think bigger than just the endurance pickup truck. Great truck alone does not make a great business. To succeed, Lordstown Motors needs innovation, a competitive cost structure, a vehicle development platform that brings products to market quickly and efficiently, and a differentiated commercial plan. Okay, differentiate. Well, that was a mouthful, but he's saying that <clears throat> they got to move on and uh, and move on to uh, thinking bigger about Lordstown Motors and what they have to do, basically. And uh, he's talking about speed to market and a platform that allows that. So let's see what he has to say here. We need a strategy that wins meaningful market share in our target markets against much larger competitors. Okay, that's self-explanatory. So he's talking about strategy here, and you know he's obviously mentioned uh, moving, changing the business model, and the strategy is to edge out bigger, bigger businesses, and I think namely Ford here in the commercial market. Let's move forward. I joined Lordstown Motors because I believe that the company has a strategic path to becoming a competitive EV manufacturer by focusing on partnerships and targeting the commercial vehicle segment. Okay, that's important. Uh, he didn't say they have a, uh, a plan. Um, he, he joined because, not because of the product, the endurance, but because of the potential for partnerships I think that's important. So the emphasis is going off uh, the endurance. So he's basically splitting uh, the company up into two parts. The endurance is one section, 
but the other section is Lordstown Motors as a standalone entity, uh, uh, apart from uh, the endurance specifically, and um, and it sounds like he's looking to um, well, let's let's hear what he said again. A joint venture partners. So this is a this is a change from what we've all been looking forward to the um start of production focused entirely on the endurance and he's talking about um moving forward with much bigger ideas. Let's hear that again. Share in our target markets against much larger competitors. I joined Lordstown Motors because I believe that the company has a strategic path to becoming a competitive EV manufacturer by focusing on partnerships and targeting the commercial vehicle segment. The strategic... Okay, partnerships and the commercial vehicle segment. So, uh, looks like he's not bent on the consumer segment. And uh, he's laying it all out here. He's talking about partnerships to gain traction and momentum and a meaningful market share against much larger adversaries through partnerships so that pretty much defines the agreement with foxconn let's uh, see so we've moved past the endurance thinking bigger and um, into other vehicles let's not put words in his mouth let's see what he has to say partnership with foxconn is an important first step that supports the critical success important first step so um are there going to be other partnerships? We don't know, but he does signify it as a first step. So obviously there are other shoes to fall here, and there's probably going to be more changes. Let's see what he has to say. Factors I just mentioned, particularly competitive and much more flexible cost structure and a vehicle development platform. Competitive and flexible cost structure, I think that's contract manufacturing. Uh, a cost effective, uh, and what was that? Uh, the uh, platform. And I think that's, uh, he's implying here a move towards the NIH uh, platform and away from the Endurance Hub Motor uh, platform. Uh, that, that would be the thrust I get from that. Let's hear it again. Partnerships and targeting the commercial vehicle segment. The strategic partnership with Foxconn is an important first step that supports the critical success factors I just mentioned, particularly competitive and much more flexible cost structure and a vehicle development platform. Our partnership with Foxconn by no means guarantees our success, but it does address some significant preconditions. I'll talk more about our Foxconn relationship in a few minutes, but first let me start with an update on our top operational priority. Okay, so he's put that out there uh, as the overall overreaching goal. Now he's going to move into the specific uh, endurance program issues and launching the startup production on the endurance. So you have the endurance on one hand, and then really in a separate silo, you have this uh, joint manufacturing effort model. Um, which uh, it sounds like the endurance is not part of, but let's see. Bringing the endurance to market as soon as possible. In the third quarter, we continued to build and test prototype vehicles. We began building pre-production vehicles earlier this quarter. These vehicles are production design intent based on learnings from our prior CAE. So they have started the pre-production vehicles, which is... Um, you know, uh, it's behind schedule, but um, they are on track with delays, um, it seems. Uh, I think uh, perhaps things were held up by the merger talks or the, the sale talks with um, um, Mitsubishi, uh, Foxconn, and uh, I think perhaps that's understandable because, you know, they're building them on a line that they're not going to own anymore. So uh, there's some justification there for the delay. And, and they are in the PPV uh, program, which is the final step. These are essentially production vehicles that are going to go out for certification and 
and uh, testing, uh, I believe he sent, uh, well, let's not put words in his mouth. Let's see what he says. And prototype vehicle testing work. We expect to build approximately 100 pre-production vehicles over the next three months to pursue a variety of validation activities aimed at achieving full homologation. So uh, the next three months, is that what he said? Full homolo homologation? <laughs> Let's see. Our CAE and prototype vehicle testing work. We expect to build approximately 100. Okay, they're going to build 100 PPV vehicles. Pre-production vehicles over the next three months. Over the next three months. So that's uh, November, December, January. And they've already started. So we're at January next year. To pursue a Let's variety see. of validation activities aimed at achieving full homologation. This reflects a modest delay in our pre-production build schedule from earlier expectations and is largely the result of part shortages, raw material availability, delayed semiconductor shipments, and other supply chain disruptions, which, as you all know, are impacting the entire automotive industry. Okay, the delay gonna, in the pre-production... Okay, we're going to have to give them a pass on that because it's true. Ford has got trucks parked on raceways because they can't get a certain component. Um, you know, GM as well. I mentioned the ABS circuit board for the braking systems in my last uh, video. I believe that's in shortage. Now, the thing is, just as an aside here, this is one of advantage Tesla has in that uh, they've designed their architecture. They don't have, I, I can't say totally, but they basically have uh, the operating system for the entire automobile on one chip, okay, one processor, and one circuit board. And they don't have circuit boards distributed all over the car uh, as uh, Ford and GM does. Uh, they have um, uh, one basic, uh, cer certain there's a circuit board and the, the motor assembly and so forth. But the point is, this is why they can do uh, updates, uh, because they uh, have everything um, running off of one board and one chip. And uh, this is what gives them the advantage. And when they um, when there's a chip shortage, uh, what they can do is reprogram the operating system of the car around that chip shortage. Uh, whereas GM, Ford, and the rest of them, they're tied to these legacy systems, uh, which have a separate circuit board for the ABS system, maybe a separate circuit board for the you know, the fuel economy timing on the motor and a separate uh, circuit board for the uh, uh, PCM. You know, they have a central control computer as well, and then they maybe have a separate. So you see what I'm saying. Um, and I think the endurance, uh, although Burns was a programmer, and we don't know exactly uh, how the system was worked out, but it... Uh, it sounds as if there there are separate components. They are using the, the GM uh, parts bin, so you can expect these separate components. So I think we're going to have to give them a pass on that, uh, along with the rest of the auto industry. Let's go back to the call. And vehicle bill, as well as revised testing schedules, mean that we expect commercial production and customer deliveries to begin in the third quarter of 2022. Okay, so third quarter of 2022. Uh, is production, startup production. And what he's saying is the part shortages have thrown a, thrown a monkey wrench in everything. And as I mentioned in my previous call, uh, they're probably limited. Uh, well, you know, why, um, you know, why build out, why get certified and everything if there's going to be a part shortage that isn't, going to allow them to go into production so in other words it sounds as if they're timing the start of production to the estimated start of the availability of these parts that are needed for mass production um burns had said that they had bought enough chips for the first year of production i made a video on this um you know maybe he didn't uh, I, th this needs clarification 
but uh, again, I think we're going to have to give him a pass on this. It sounds like the whole reason uh, for the delay in the start of production is, in fact, this uh, part shortage affecting the entire industry. Understandable. I, uh, I think we're going to have to give him a pass on it. I think the explanation could be clearer. But anyway, let's move on. From there, we would expect to gradually ramp production through the back half of the year. Next, I want to update you on our progress tackling the commercial fleet segment. While all major OEMs are accelerating their electric pickup truck programs, we believe demand will outstrip supply for the foreseeable future and continue to grow. We also believe that demand will be especially strong among commercial fleet customers who are particularly focused on total cost of ownership and performance. That's where we believe the endurance will deliver. Yes, the endurance will, in fact, deliver on total cost of ownership. I mean, it just blows away uh, the Ford Lightning. And uh, I mentioned this in my last video. Um, I think that uh, he's uh, correct in this. I, I, uh, let's just move forward. The hub motor design offers unique benefits in its combination of horsepower, torque, handling, and turning radius. Today, we have some updates on our go-to-market progress. As you know, our primary sales channel is fleet management companies and commercial fleet operators. Our team spends a lot of time at trade shows and other industry events, and we're seeing the results from this outreach. We're receiving strong positive feedback from potential customers who have recently evaluated or experienced a ride in the endurance. Okay, he is tap dancing around any potential order numbers. Uh, doesn't want to get indicted. <laughs> um, I'm sure his lawyer has told him not to mention any uh, specifics here. Let's uh, just see how he, uh, how good he tap dances. We continue to execute on our commercial fleet first strategy and have received additional indications of interest from a number of commercial customers, including fleet management companies. These indications of interest, while non-binding and subject to certain conditions, are a show of confidence in the endurance and demand for electric pickup trucks generally and are important steps in building our order book. In addition to our focus on the private sector fleet market, we are also excited about the opportunity with the public sector, with growing demand emerging from federal, state, and local government entities for zero emission vehicles. Okay, uh, Q's View did a brief video on some orders they got from the uh, U.S. government. Again, he's tap dancing around this, but with the EV move overall and the Biden infrastructure package and the, the, uh, the environmental focus of this administration, um, the purchase of government purchase, public sector purchase of these trucks makes perfect sense. Let's move on with this call. As a fleet first OEM, Lordstown is well positioned to help meet the myriad of federal, state, and local initiatives targeted at transitioning public fleets to zero emission with the endurance. Since our last earnings call, we've also made progress. I'm just going to mention, I did a video on this. The municipal and uh, fleet opportunity is very big. Um, the cities, both in the United States and even more so in Europe, uh, the municipalities are looking to go all EV uh, in Europe uh, by mandate. and and in the U.S. as well, there's local mandates, so uh, that's also a strong market. Let's move on. ...towards securing the resources fleet operators will need after they purchase the endurance. You've heard us say before that trucks with fewer moving parts will need less maintenance, but our fleet customers will expect timely and easy access to options when they do need service. So to support our fleet management partners, we've signed a memorandum of understanding with Cox Automotive, with a mutual goal to provide service and support to all Lordstown Motors EV fleet customers. Okay, so that's that's a shout out to the order book saying, you know, you wanted us to confirm uh, service. Here it is. We're confirming. Okay, so he is uh, sending a, uh, it's a dog whistle to the fleet customers, I believe. Cox Automotive Service Marketplace has more than 6,000 service centers. 3,000 partner locations, and 800 mobile technicians nationwide. The Cox team would deliver a full suite of service solutions, including preventative scheduled maintenance, vehicle pickup and delivery, 
battery servicing, vehicle and collision repairs, and roadside assistance. Coupled with our advanced connected vehicle technology and over-the-air update capabilities, we're confident that we'll be able to meet our customers' needs once we have executed a commercial agreement and they begin to take delivery. Well, let's just go through that one more time. The uh, connected vehicles. This is the stuff Burns, uh, Steve Burns, was a specialist in, and what he felt was very important, uh, the software infrastructure, the back end and the front end for these fleet vehicles. Let's just hear what he has to say on that again. 100 mobile technicians nationwide. The Cox team would deliver a full suite of service solutions, including preventative scheduled maintenance, vehicle pickup and delivery, battery servicing, vehicle and collision repairs, and roadside assistance. Coupled with our advanced connected vehicle technology and over-the-air update capabilities, we're confident that we'll be able to meet our Over-the-air updates and fleet management software. And again, these were burns, and this would be the IP of, I had a comment asking what the IP, this would be part of the IP of Lordstown. Uh, that could apply cross-platform to any joint venture they do with uh, Foxconn. Let's move forward. Customers' needs once we have executed a commercial agreement and they begin to take delivery of our vehicles. We've also expanded our team here at Lordstown. As we shared earlier this week, Edward Hightower, a veteran automotive executive, has been appointed president of Lordstown, effective November 29th. Now, this, uh, this move is... I think also part of moving away from just producing the endurance, which was the focus of all the shareholders in Lordstown up till this point. And now with this new CEO and these new developments, uh, this new appointment uh, represents a broadening of those interests. So let's see what he has to say about that. This is moving into the uh, his new roadmap for Lordstown Motors, seeing Lordstown Motors as separate from the Endurance, as the Endurance being one product and Lordstown Motors being a separate entity or a new entity, uh, a bigger a bigger entity than just one vehicle. Let's hear what he has to say. Ed has 30 years of experience serving in product development, engineering, manufacturing, commercial, and senior executive roles between Ford, BMW, and GM. He led GM's $15 billion global crossovers business as the executive chief engineer and vehicle line executive. At BMW, he helped drive five series sales, market share, and profitability in the U.S. to record levels. We also announced this week that we're bringing on board Shea Burns. A All right, so uh, it, it looks like uh, uh, the new CEO uh, wants to build you know, perhaps instead of the big three automakers, maybe he's looking really big picture going to the big four automakers. Of course, that's aspirational, but that staffing pick would indicate that kind of a movement. And now let's hear about Shea. He's the operations guy he's brought in. Senior Vice President of Operations. Shea has been working with us for a couple of months in an advisory capacity and will primarily focus on endurance launch readiness as well as the implementation of the Foxconn transaction. Shea has over 25 years of experience. In okay, it sounds like Shea is going to take over uh, the endurance project. And uh, the CEO and, the, uh, and Hightower are going to be moving forward with this bigger picture. That would be my take on it, the bigger picture joint venture with uh, Foxconn. And they said potential other partners in the automotive industry, including having previously served as vehicle launch leader at Ford Motor Company and senior director of quality and director of engineering operations at Meritor. Ed and Shea, together with the recent appointment of our new CFO, Adam Kroll, significantly strengthen our engineering, product development, operations, and financial teams. This brings me to our partnership with Foxconn which we believe will be transformative for our company and mutually beneficial for both organizations. Okay, so transformational for our company. So again, I think we've got two silos here. The one silo is the Endurance Project and the launch of the Endurance. Uh, that would be the flagship product. And we've always seen the Endurance in Lordstown as one and the same. 
and the Javon, uh, uh, the new CEO, I got to learn how to pronounce his name, is seeing two silos as one silo, the other silo being Lordstown Motors Corp, uh, which is much bigger, uh, of which the endurance is just part of that uh, silo. So uh, he's seeing a bigger picture for Lordstown Motors, and uh, he's and you know uh, he may have something there because you know he Lordstown Motors is getting in on the ground floor with Fox Tron, Fox Connor Fox Tron, and uh, they said the CEO said we don't know how to build C, uh, EVs, and Lordstown certainly does so. Uh, there may be something here. Let's just hear what uh, the CEO has to say about Foxconn. As previously disclosed, on September 30th, we entered into an agreement in principle, or AIP, with an affiliate of Han Hai Precision Industries, also known as Foxconn, to work jointly on Lordstown Motors electric vehicle programs in our production and assembly plant in Lordstown, Ohio. Shortly after the AIP, and as a sign of confidence in our partnership, Foxconn purchased $50 million of common stock directly from Lordstown at a price of approximately $6.90 per share. Well, they're putting their money where their mouth is. That's what he's saying. I'm happy to report that a definitive asset purchase agreement with Foxconn was entered into yesterday. The final agreement is substantially similar, similar to what we provided in the agreement in principle. We have agreed to sell the Lordstown facility, excluding certain assets such as our hub motor assembly line and battery module and pack lines for two. Okay, so again, this is the endurance silo uh, part of the business. The endurance program has been separated out, it sounds like, from Lordstown Motors. So uh, the endurance has, has become, rather than the end all be all of the entire company, it's one product that the company is going to be supplying to the marketplace and they have uh as part of that product silo they've stripped out the battery and the hub motor production line so that that the endurance is going to be a uh as i said a standalone uh, product uh, product line for for lordstown but it would seem one of many let's hear what he has to say 230 million in addition to the reimbursement of certain operating and facility costs incurred from September 1st, 2021 through the closing date. Okay, now this is important because there's a shortfall in operating capital here. And um, this is one thing that hasn't been quantified. Foxconn is going to reimburse them for all the operating expenses they're playing from September 1 until the final agreement in April. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. So that is eight months. And uh, that is what? Uh, uh, that's uh, three quarters about. And, and if they're burning 90 grand, uh, 90 mil a quarter, I mean, that could, that could represent... Uh, 250 to 270 million dollars depending on how much of that uh, OPEX uh, they apply uh, they'd have to strip out uh, the parts that were just for the endurance silo I would imagine and uh, be reimbursed for the parts that were there to run the plant so this could be a significant source of hidden capital that we can't quantify right now moving forward the parties have also agreed to pursue a contract manufacturing agreement for the endurance pickup truck. Okay, and again, this is a, entered as a separate item. It's a separate silo. This is going to be critical. What kind of deal are they going to give? I mean, you know, if they're a joint venture partner and this is their first product uh, together, you know, it's going to lay the groundwork for everything. So we're going to have to see what, what kind of deal uh, Navaji can hammer out with our rich uh, Chinese uncle. Let's move forward. Which must be entered into before closing, which is currently targeted for April 30th. Okay, so he's put a, a deadline on this. It's a negotiating technique. And uh, it's 
the whole deal is dependent on it. So it uh, looks like he's already playing hardball a little bit on this. He may have uh, gone over easy on the sale of the plant, but this seems to be something he's negotiating hard. Let's move forward. And that would be the nature of the contract manufacturing agreement. In addition, the parties will pursue a joint venture agreement to co-design, engineer, and develop vehicle programs for the commercial market in North America and internationally. Okay, now this is that second silo. We have the endurance. And that was the first comment. That was the first silo. This is the second silo. This is General Motors, Inc. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a Freudian slip. Lordstown Motors, Inc., where they're looking at uh, doing the design work uh, along with the contract manufacturer and taking over the world and moving to a much bigger place. And uh, this is a way for Foxconn to leapfrog and get into the EV business quicker. And I'm sure they have other partners and other things, but they have stated, Foxconn has stated that this is going to be their key R&D and product development center in the United States. So this could be a much bigger deal than any of us see it as now. And Nijvani, uh, the new CEO, this is his vision, again, for uh, putting the endurance in a silo and then in a separate, much bigger silo, Lordstown Motors, Inc. Let's, uh, and also, they're talking about developing products for the U.S. and internationally, globally. So, uh, certainly they can design the products here, establish the manufacturing techniques, and then replicate them uh, uh, in Foxconn factories all over the world. Sounds to me like what they're talking about. And Lordstown would be a big part of that. Uh, let's move forward. Using Foxconn's MIH open platform. And again, they want to use this open platform. They have mentioned it's like the Android phone. Uh, it is the skateboard um, that the uh, whole process is based on. And um, this has been uh, developed by a whole group of companies in Asia. And it is considered an open source uh type of product although that has a different connotation and definition in asia i believe but uh so what he's saying here is hub motors no lordstown would have the right to commercialize these new ev programs in north america and foxconn would have the right to commercialize the programs outside of north america okay so there's the split lordstown motors is going to be domestic u.s and Foxconn is going to be outside globally, um, but they're both going to be designed by Lordstown. Interesting because uh, Lordstown has the North American rights to the hub motors. Perhaps, uh, well, you know, Foxconn would have to get the international rights to the hub motors if they were going to use hub motors. Uh, perhaps... Perhaps this is what they're going for. We don't know. We don't have that information. But that is that is his plan. Again, splitting into two silos, the endurance being just simply a project, a, a product line. Uh, Lordstown Motors, Inc. moving into being, a, you know, they got the big three. He wants to make it the big four, uh, the joint venture between Lordstown Motors and Foxconn. Um Building, uh, developing, and building electric vehicles for the United, for the U.S. market, uh, which will also be sold all over the world. So he's talking about, uh, and they're talking about the commercial market here, but it's a quick step over to the, um, uh, you know, selling directly to the public as well. Let's move forward. Subject to mutual licensing agreements. Mutual licensing agreements. Interesting. Mutual license. Let's replay that. And the parties will pursue a joint venture agreement to co-design, engineer, and develop vehicle programs for the commercial market in North America and internationally using Foxconn's MIH open platform. Lordstown would have the right to commercialize these new EV programs in North America, and Foxconn would have the right to commercialize the programs outside of North America, subject to mutual licensing agreements. Licensing agreements, interesting concept. 
like I said, uh, Lordstown has the North American hub market license to manufacture and deploy and uh, develop the uh, Alafe motor. Could this could this global licensing agreement involve uh, Alafe granting a, a exp a expansion of that uh, license for Lordstown or granting another license to Foxconn where they would change the Emma NAH platform uh, to from using the inboard uh, induction electric motors to hub motors which would be a very easy change to make on that skateboard they would simply uh, you know move the motors to the wheels and eliminate that weight and the structure in the middle where the induction motors are now it would involve a suspension change totally doable to the NIH platform interesting he's not saying that I don't know you got to read between the lines Han High Precision Industries the parent of Foxconn is the largest electronics manufacturer in the world as well as a leading technology solution provider for manufacturers the company is well known for making Apple iPhones and other consumer electronics but not everyone may know that the company under its chairman Young Lu is pursuing an aggressive expansion plan in three areas robotics digital health and EV manufacturing EV manufacturing is one of their major pushes uh, he has stated and you can look at some of the videos I have on the Lordstown playlist on my website I have a speech that he said they want to move aggressively and quickly to rapidly gain global market share in the EV market they are not fooling around okay they want to move fast and break things Foxconn and their parent company in the EV space in their recent tech day Han Hai unveiled three new prototype vehicles each of which utilizes the company's open source vehicle de development platform called MIH which stands for mobility in harmony MIH has been referred to as the Android of EV manufacturing it is designed to promote collaboration in the industry to lower barriers to entry and cut development time and cost through the use of common standardized components and systems and a flexible modular platform. We look forward to becoming an OEM development partner on the MIH platform and through our joint venture with Foxconn, using the MIH platform to jointly design, engineer, and develop commercial vehicles that can be marketed globally. I don't know. Could they be implementing the hub motor as part of the MIH program? I have no idea. It certainly sounds like he's alluding to that. Um, we don't know. This is all speculation. In addition to other strategic benefits, the Foxconn partnership will unlock the tremendous potential of the Lordstown plant by getting it to scale faster. Um, again, could be alluding to... You see, of uh, Lordstown is is the leader of hub motor development, not just in the United States, in the universe. They have more experience working with hub motors than anyone out in the real world. I don't know. Is this involved, or is this going to be put on the back burner for more conventional EV architecture? I don't know. It sounds like he's alluding to perhaps implementing hub motors on the MIH platform let's say I don't know that's just what I'm hearing you guys can tell me what you think in the comments certainly he's not saying it so at 6.2 million square feet and 640 acres the Lordstown complex was one of the largest internal combustion automotive plants in North America that is now being converted to a state-of-the-art EV manufacturing facility Foxconn has an excellent opportunity to fill the plant, having already announced that the Fisker Pair program is intended to be manufactured in Lordstown. LMC and all OEMs whose vehicles are built at the plant will benefit from the increased capacity utilization, possible use of common components, and lower overhead costs. Okay, so, uh, you know, again, very smart move by both Foxconn and Lordstown and everyone participating here. Group purchasing of common parts, lowering overhead, a very good concept. As I said earlier, scale in automotive manufacturing matters a lot. 
Use of shared space, together with the MIH Open Platform, provides smaller, more specialized OEMs the opportunity to achieve the benefits of scale without being a large, fully integrated automaker. Finally, the partnership with Foxconn should significantly reduce our raw material component and other input costs. As the largest contract manufacturer in the world, Foxconn has the purchasing power, supply chain network, and the logistics capabilities. Again, this is going to have to do with the bill of materials for the builds of the endurance. And I, I agree, they have leverage to buy, you know, not just a hundred thousand of those wing nuts, they'll buy a billion of them. So they'll get them for a better price. That's just an example, but you get my drift. To help us significantly reduce vehicle production costs and minimize our supply chain risk. We also stand to benefit from Foxconn's expertise in hardware and software integration, critical to EVs, given their- Okay, and, and that's a given too. Uh, although Lordstown is probably, uh, they have a general knowledge. Lordstown has a sp specific knowledge of this. Our expertise as a multinational electronics manufacturer. As we grow together, these benefits will only improve. So grow together. Well, wow, that's a pretty rosy scenario. Still in the honeymoon phase here. Before I turn it over to Adam, I wanted to share my overall thoughts about Lordstown's future. Our goal is to become a Capital Light Engineering Design and Development Company focused on Capital Light Engineering and Design Company. That is his roadmap. Moving away from a manufacturer, OEM, to a Capital Light Engineering and Design Firm. This is the Apple uh, model producing multiple all-electric vehicle programs, primarily multiple programs, of which the endurance is just one, where it was the one and only, now it is one of many. Early for the North American commercial vehicle market. North American commercial vehicle market, so is your target. In Foxconn, we gain a great partner that has a vision of an all-EV future and the resources to build a global vehicle engineering and manufacturing footprint. The transaction will significantly de-risk our balance sheet, lower our... De-risk the balance sheet. I agree. Uh, moving forward. Our production costs and allow us to... Lower production costs. Absolutely focus on bringing innovative electric vehicles to market quicker and more cost effectively so they're talking about product development becoming a product development firm again becoming becoming apple coming up with the ipod uh, you know the i uh, the, the ipad the uh, uh the iphones okay and uh, developing those in-house, as an example, that would be Lordstown, and then giving them to the Foxconn to build. But rather than being Apple computer products, they're going to be electric vehicles, which are going to be designed and engineered by Lordstown and then turned over uh, to Foxconn to produce. It is the Apple model, and it is uh, CapEx light because they're uh, de-risking all the CapEx to Foxconn uh, which is going to, in turn, de-risk by having multiple clients manufacturing out of this facility. So again, it could. It, this 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 sounds like two plus two equals five. Let's see what else he has to say. I'd like to thank the entire Lordstown and Foxconn teams for working so hard to get to this stage. But I do realize that this is only the beginning, and Foxconn is only part of the solution. We must execute and execute better and deliver the endurance truck. Our team gets it and we'll do everything possible to deliver. With that, I'll now turn it over to Adam. Okay, so he has not lost focus. You know, they have to make their bones by launching this product. This is gonna be their first product. And this is gonna be their first joint venture build with Fox uh, Con. So, it's important to them, irregardless of these other bigger plans. They're going to basically rise or fall on the endurance 
uh, as is the Foxconn venture. So they're very focused on that. I think we can take away from this, uh, and we're going to be ending this now. We can take away from this that uh, they have not lost sight of the focus on the endurance. Uh, it has been slowed down the development. I believe the part shortages seem to make sense because they don't want to invest a lot of capex until there's enough uh, parts to do the mass production, which makes sense. Um, and we have to look at two silos now. We have a product silo, which is the endurance. And then we have the Lordstown Motors Inc. silo, of which the endurance is just part of it. So we have to look at this as a much bigger picture. Was there implications that hub motors might be in, in, used in the MIH program? Maybe. Maybe in some of the MIH program. Maybe not in all of it. There seemed to be breadcrumbs there that something like that might be going on. Uh, and I think the other key is this September till the closing of the uh, uh, deal with Foxconn, all the uh, OPEX that uh, Lordstown puts into that, uh, aside from what's needed to run the uh, hub motor production line and the battery manufacturing line, is going to be reimbursed by Foxconn. That could be a significant amount of money. If they're doing 90 million a quarter, that's approximately three quarters. So that's $270 million, maybe. 250 to $270 million that are invisible right now. So anyway, um, after parsing uh, through the CEO's comments, I feel more confident about Lordstown right now. Um, I think we're going to have to see, you know, we're just going to have to wait. I don't know how, you know, with the SEC and the DOJ, they're not going to be able to say anything about anything until it's written and down and the, the signed and delivered. So I think we're going to be in the dark and we're going to have to look for breadcrumbs. It all sounds very exciting. Uh, Di Giovanni, Ni Giovanni. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. The new CEO, I apologize. He's got a really big vision for Lordstown, much bigger than Steve Burns had. And um, let's see if uh, he can make a go of it. He certainly is uh, thinking big. So if you never have a dream, how are your dreams going to come true? Looks like he's got a dream. All right, this is MXUX. I hope you like this video. I'm going to be signing off now. Thanks a lot, guys. A uh, subscribe and like and comment and all that stuff. Thanks for watching. MXUX out.